grounding video number two from the electric meter usually straight down straight down within a few feet underground sometimes there are they're above ground on a new house on this house it was down pretty far I had to dig and if you're digging be very careful there are wires down here and you have to be careful now you won't be shocked these are grounds if you do get shocked <laughs> sometimes you may want to take a voltage uh, tester and see if there's voltage here because if you have an active ground fault in the house that you don't know about it's going to end up here so you may want to test that first anyway this is my main ground rod it's a very old house there are the deeper I dig the more lugs I find so there's no more room on that rod for me unless I excavate or add another which I won't do here is a I don't know a number four a number two that comes off the electric meter now if we follow this green and this copper wire that goes up to my grounding box here's where the antenna feeds in if this line feeds this is the main feed from the antenna it goes to a grounding block here's a copper it's a number eight feeds around into a splitter and then it feeds my two TVs individually that also is grounded with the green wire and I try to get that as straight as possible which is not always possible but you take it down and you attach it to wherever you can down here I know some people will give me grief for saying that but making a path of least resistance is much better than the path the electricity will find if you don't make a path so that grounds my antenna feed lines and that's a nice setup I just believe in splitting here and feeding individual TVs rather than split all over the house you know you got stuff running through the attic you got splitters everywhere you get too much next the yellow wire this yellow wire comes off the bottom of my mast it's a number 10 and it attaches right here via this lug and that grounds the mast that's a separate ground and it's very important because your antenna element reflect or the antenna element is electrically separated from the backbones, the uh, reflectors, uh, uh, all the other metal parts, the mast. So that's a separate system, more or less. It's electrically separated. This grounds the rest of your antenna. And if you don't have a ground rod in an older house, you may be grounded to a water pipe. Uh, some people some places it may be grounded to a wellhead as uh, you have to investigate carefully if you don't have an eye clear idea of what you're doing consult somebody who does because it's very important the reason I'm showing you this is because I had a lightning strike and if I had not grounded my antenna properly I'd be out buying a new TV and maybe rebuilding the living room from the fire that started but the ground system worked it worked well a path of least resistance is better than no path because if it gets in your house it'll hurt you good luck here is the uh, electrical detector I discussed or the voltage detector and if you have voltage anywhere like here it tells you these things only cost a few bucks in a oh Lowe's or wherever 
I bought this at Lowe's. But the big hardware stores, they should have it. And that'll tell you if you have voltage anywhere. And this is what I meant. I should have shown it. But if you, you check down here. If you do have voltage, you have a, a ground fault situation going on in the house. And you may need to invest, have someone investigate that. But this will tell you if there's voltage anywhere. And it's a very handy thing. I mean, there's voltage in here. You know not to stick your fingers in there because there's voltage. But that's a very handy little thing. And uh, it saved my life a few times. Next, from the antenna, like I said, the antenna and the backbones, all this metal here, the reflector screen, that's electrically separated from your elements. That's the idea of the insulators. You insulate, this is one electrical system, and it feeds through the ballon or ballon and feeds into the house. This, if it takes static or lightning, it has to go someplace. This piece of conduit, although it sticks in the ground, it is not grounded. Every electrical engineer, contractor, anyone with knowledge will tell you that's not grounded. You need to feed this via a line. This runs underground with my with my uh, antenna feed over to the ground rod, as you saw. But that is highly highly recommended by me and everybody else that is involved with antennas. Ground your mast and make sure you have a good piece of wire. Some of this RG6 with the ground uh, wire that's not very that's not very big. I this is a number 10 piece of wire it's it, it it conducts quite well but that pole sticking in the ground I don't care what anybody says it's not grounded it may help a little bit but it's not grounded and if you don't have a good path to ground it's gonna find a way <laughs> and another thing this also does is it siphons off static that gets in here just from the wind blowing and uh, when the air is dry, there's a lot, of, lot more static. You know, when, when it gets dry, you know, in the house, you touch something and you get a static shock. But this is very important. You have your, your antenna feed is grounded. Your antenna elements are separated from the structure of the antenna. And this is any antenna, not just my antenna, it's any antenna. And, uh, it could be at the bottom, it could be at the top, it's wherever it's convenient for, for you to feed it. But that is very important. And you feed that directly over to the ground rod or your grounding point and tie it in. Be careful. <laughs>